So, a little bit ago, I did a video called Stop Saying Players Miss, where I reacted to a Reddit post and then told you guys how to flavor combat. And in the comments of that video, a couple of people asked me, how do you flavor the scene? You know, how do you flavor really anything in Dungeons and & Dragons and make it sound good? So today, that's what we're gonna go over. Riser, Dubbard, Dubbard! I take how much damage? This is going to probably be one of the more general broad videos that I've ever done on this channel because it doesn't just apply to Dungeons and Dragons. It applies to writing in general, and I have been writing for a very long time. Comedy, poem, storybooks, campaigns for Dungeons and Dragons, and more. So I'm very happy to share this piece of advice with you because it will help you in anything that you choose to write. And that advice is, Go with the five senses. I know that seems pretty obvious, but you would be surprised how often I hear people go, you walk into a cave, it's dark. <laughs> the five senses are the most important faucet of painting a picture through words. So whenever you're trying to describe a scene, you want to make sure that you include not just sight or sounds, but sight, sounds, smells, and then if it applies, taste and touch. In order to help you guys better understand how to describe something, we are going to be describing a tavern because, well, every Dungeons and Dragons campaign has to have a tavern at some point by law. So hopefully these tips can help you out. So what I like to do actually is not describe sight first. I actually like to describe smells. Now, the reason I like to describe smells first is because smell is a very, very powerful tool for painting the picture you want to paint. I know in a lot of people's minds, they're like, what are you talking about? But I want you to think about the last time you smelled a meal from your childhood, like an actual meal from your childhood. I don't know about the rest of you, but when I smell like homemade rice and gravy that my mom's making, it, boom, immediately sends me back to running around the house and playing with toys and waiting for the rice and gravy to be done and my dad on the couch watching his movies, uh, it, it just sends me right back, right? Mama's homemade rice and gravy from back when I was a kid growing up in South Louisiana is one of the greatest smells that just puts me back. Or around winter time, whenever I'm like, I smell the, the, the cold, I don't know how to describe it, right? But you know what I mean? When you, when you smell the cold of winter, I immediately get sent back to laying on my granny's couch while she's baking homemade cookies and watching Christmas movies galore in her living room, right? It instantly puts me there. So when you're describing smells to people, it can very easily help them paint a picture. So for the tavern, you might say you walk in and you immediately smell pine and cedar. As the fire crackles, you can faintly smell the brimstone from the logs burning. A waitress walks in front of you, greets you, and as she's leaving, you pick up the flowery scent of her perfume. This instantly paints a much better picture in the player's mind as they're able to imagine all the things that they might be picking up with their noses. And if you describe common things, then it's a lot easier for the players to imagine what that smells like. And those smells entering their memory help with the picture that you're trying to paint. One thing that I wanna to put to the side that I actually didn't put in my notes is don't be afraid to use modern day words to describe things, right? Like I just said, you smell the flowery perfume of the waitress. Some people might go, bah, 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 bah. but back in those times, perfume didn't exist. Maybe it did, maybe it didn't. I'm too lazy to look it up, but that's just it. I'm too lazy to look it up, and so are your players. Nobody's gonna give a fuck if you describe something from the modern era in order to try to help paint the picture that you're trying to paint. Well, no matter which one of these senses you're using, right? If you wanna describe a wagon, but in order to describe the wagon, you might say, the wheels on it are about as big as a pickup truck's. You can do that because while the characters might know not know what a pickup truck is, that doesn't matter. You're not describing the scene to the characters, you're describing the scene to your players. And so just just use modern words. Don't try to like go out of your way and like heavily describe something that they might not know what it is because you spent 
fucking two hours on, on, on medievalwiki.com or whatever. You know what I mean? Just describe stuff using modern days and it's going to be a lot easier for you. Now, after I describe smells, I like to describe hearing and sight at the same time. Because a lot of times when you're looking at something, if you're in close enough proximity, you're also probably hearing it as well. So, uh, we, we, you know, you walk into the tavern, you describe the smells, and then you say, the noises and the conversation start to rise above. But you can pick a few out. In the far corner table, you see two gnomes, and they are arguing about whether or not the trinket in front of them could possibly work. The bartender, in a very gruff vo voice, is denying another drink to the drunken elf. No, you don't need another. I said, now get out. The waitress whose perfume you smelled earlier is currently kindly rejecting two human city guards sitting at another faraway table. You can hear the fire crackling and behind the bartender is varying containers of colored liquids. The bartender is wearing an old apron and very partially cleaning out a glass. You can almost hear the squeaks as he stares down the elf that refuses to leave. With these kinds of descriptions, you've painted a very, very, very clear picture of what they can hear, see, and smell. But what about the other two? What about taste and touch? How does that come into our bar scene? Well, very oftentimes you might ask the players if they are going to order something or where they're going to sit and who they're going to talk to. Once the players are able to explain to you what it is they're doing, you can say things like, as you sit on the chair, you can feel a slight wobble to it as if one leg is shorter than the other three your hands when you place them onto the bar you can feel the bar is rough but clean and definitely kept up to date this was no doubt handcrafted and not made with magic now as for taste it's very obvious to go with the well you taste the ale the ale is handed to you and it tastes a little bit of honey and is heavy on your tongue the succulent meat that you ordered from the bartender is cooked to perfection. But you can also do other things. Let's take ourselves out of the tavern for a moment and put our players in, say, a combat scenario. After a player takes a significant amount of damage from a sword, you can tell them that they taste the blood in their mouth. Let's put them in a conversation with a very important figure, say, a king. And the king is not having any of their bullshit. Perhaps the king is very wary of them and they're desperately trying to have the king understand that they are not enemies, but they are friends. As the king looks down upon them, perhaps you tell one of the players, your mouth is dry and you can almost taste cotton as you try to find the words to speak to this looming figure. There's so many different varying ways that you can use the five senses, because remember, the obvious is always going to be the obvious, but it's your job to make the obvious feel more alive. You can always say, you see a red dungeon master screen, and that's great, but what if you see a red dungeon master screen and there's minor nicks and scratches to tell you that it's obviously been used for a very long time? You can taste the water, but instead of tasting the water, you taste the chill of the water. It is undoubtedly ice cold and has been chilled to perfection. When describing a scene in any capacity, you don't want to just go to the surface level. The hair is not just black. The hair is incredibly dark, almost like the night sky. The ogre is not just fat. The ogre is hulking and makes the ground slightly shake when he walks. You can see his stomach move when he laughs. These all these sort of minor descriptors that you can toss in that really help invigorate the five senses, the basic five senses in any case. And on top of that, you can go with the sixth sense feeling. One time I was describing to my players a war that they were witnessing between goblins and lizard folk. I said, the smell of blood hangs heavy in the air. You see all of the bodies littered amongst the ground, and the once peaceful field that you had witnessed a few days ago is now stained red with all of the death and decay. And in the pit of your stomach, you feel like maybe this isn't worth living. Maybe. Maybe if life can end so quickly, what's the point in you going on? It's something that you can use as a final top off to everything. If we take ourselves back to the tavern and everything we describe, we can then tell our players, you feel warm and welcome. 
Despite the gruff appearance and the gruff nature of the bartender, he is very happy to serve you, and you can feel the friendliness of his look. The waitress that comes over to talk to you when she speaks fills you with joy and understanding. The very most important part of every single thing you do is to top it off with the way it makes the characters feel. Because we've all felt anger, sadness, joy, depression, anxiety, fear. Every human has felt these things. And so when you tell your players how their characters are feeling, that might be the biggest thing. But I do have one final piece of advice, one that I forgot to write in my notes. Well, forgot, <laughs> didn't think about it until now. The one thing I want you to always do is use the words you. You feel, you see, you hear. Never ever use the words your characters. Your characters see, your characters hear, your characters feel. Because that creates detachment. If you want your players to be immersed in the world that you are describing, if you want them to be in your Norman Rockwell painting, then you need to make sure that you are saying they are in it and not someone else. And that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'm very sorry for the weird angle and the lack of dress shirts. Uh, it's been a very rough week. Um, I'm honestly been dealing with a lot that I don't want to get too much into right now. Um, I know you guys don't come to hear about my problems, but uh, yeah, so it's been a rough week and getting getting this week's videos out uh, and, and next week's as well. I've got like seven videos written down right now uh, is, is very, very hard. So uh, I appreciate you guys watching regardless and I hope you enjoyed and thank you guys so much for all the love that's been coming to my content and to the channel. It's I never thought that I'd be able to make Dungeons and Dragons content and people would actually want to watch it. So it's it's been really cool. So thank you for that. I really appreciate it. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. And I will see you in the next one.